Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Right. So this is a personal one, and I'm just including you all in on my journey. <laughs> uh, I have been a massive fan of the Electric Mistress for a very long time, but I've been looking to replace my original again for a very long time, and I've and I haven't found anything that really nails it. What what? Uh, so let's start. It is a flanger. It is a flanger. So why are you looking to replace it? Um, it's very old now. So this is 1970. I think this is 77. Mm. Um, so that makes it God, 41 years old. And it's a bit fragile. And there are parts in there that are irreplaceable. So I don't really want to be taking it out gigging with it yeah um you know things like the the tiniest knock scratches all the pain off and and it's so funny isn't it because they were you know i can imagine when mike and the gang were making them back in the 70s they weren't thinking this is going to be around in 40 years no with people no. going oh my goodness me it's the best sounding flanger i've ever had that well no. i don't i don't I don't know, Mike, if you were thinking that, if you ever watched that pedal show, but I can imagine that you probably weren't. I mean, if you have a look at the way that it's made... Um, Mike Matthews, by the way, who was boss of the Harmonics. Have you met Mike? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's give him a honk, because I've met him as well, so he's absolutely deserved. <laughs> so, um, it's really... It's, I think Electro Harmonics is the most fascinating company. Um... One of the reasons that this sounds so good is it doesn't filter the top end. Because of that, you hear clock noise. And let me give Let's you Let's hear it then. Right, so today's amplifiers, is... we're using Marshall 90, 80, 1987 X 50 watt plexi reissue and Fender Super Reverb. A little bit classic in the amps department today. Yeah, just together. It's such a great sound. The uh, soup is on two, <laughs> so hardly working. Yeah. The Marshall is embarrassingly on about the same in both channels, actually slightly more in the uh, in the bass channel. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but for everyone who might say, oh, you should turn it up to get some overdrive, I love it like that. Yeah, yeah. That just clean headroom, it's a lovely clean amp yeah. when it's set like that. It's really, really yeah. lovely. Okay, so... Clock noise. Clock noise. All right. This is this is the clock noise. Right. It's not. It's not that bad. Well, probably would be it, like Peyton pending, but. Yeah. So th I think one of the things with that. You know, when you, with added gain and, you know, depending on the, you know, the noise and stuff, it, it, it you know, let's that can it, be man. distracting. Come on, let's can hear be, it, let's well, hear it. All right. So, this is, the, first of all, this show is not intended to be a, you know, get Gilmore tones, get Andy Summers tones, but with the reason I'm referencing them is Andy Summers and David Gilmore are two guys, um, I can actually honk Andy Summers. I... I I interviewed him on the phone. It was fascinating. Actually, you got me that interview. I did. You did. I'll never forget that. Um, you've and if you you've talked to get David Gilmore on the phone. <laughs> Sorry, I, I just love that story. I don't know him though. I, I don't know him. Yeah, but I you, don't know him. Yeah, but you you, you know. I spoke to him mates. briefly on the phone. All right. Yeah. Doesn't really. Look, doesn't, as far as David Gilmore is concerned, that's a honk. He, I think I tell you what David Gilmore gets. He gets a. He gets an air pop. <laughs> right. So the reason I reference those guys is because they they use this pedal a lot. Uh, David Gilmore uh, for five years from nineteen sixty from seventy seven to eighty three recorded a lot with. Have you been on Gilmoreish dot com? I, I love that website. Um, for Dan to come out with a fact like that is unusual. <laughs> Which suggests to me he might have done some research. I done. I have done a little bit of research. <laughs> you know, um, well, because you know, 
it's you know from as far as the modulation is concerned this is my this is i love this right now that clock noise other flanges don't have that clock noise the reason they don't have that clock noise is they filter it out but what happens when you filter that clock noise out is that you inevitably get rid of some high end because if it's in the signal path it's going to affect you know what comes out and this, and this is analog, right? This is completely because the most analog. It's the mid seventies. There's no or late seventies. There's no digital modeling going on at no, that point. No, there's no. nothing that hasn't been invented yet. No. So it's purely analog. Purely analog. Using some sort of chip. Yeah, like a grid brigade. Yeah, chip. Um, so, what does it sound like? Right here we go. So clean sound and the original mistress. Now, if I put a little bit of drive on with that, so this is the ah, uh, the guys at T Rex that sent us a mud honey, the Danish hand wired one, Danish hand wired one, and man, I love it. Special. Oh, so special. It makes all the difference when Danish hands do it. Well, if we if Michael's touched anything, it becomes special. <laughs> I love that man. He's so great. So, yeah, so with some gain, and then you hear the mistress. Strongly filtered. Now, ca ca this is very. Now, sorry. Go on. Um, I've got this set uh, in a way that um, I've got the rate down really slow. Yeah. Um, I've got the range up up fairly high, and the, and the color up. Um, what see. do the range and the color do? Right. So, the the range is the frequency sweep. Of the, yep. of the flange and the color is is uh, how the intensity of the flange so if I again with Go with on. the He's, he's desperately trying to get in there and adjust the knobs back from where I've put them on there, Max. But I think you only find out what a knob does, as it were, if you ma max and minute, right? Yeah. So he's going, oh, that sounds terrible. I'm like, no, 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 we need to know what this no, does. You're absolutely correct. So, um, right. So that's, the, and there's a sound to that that's so special. But because they don't filter it, you have this top end to it. So without the, the mistress on, let me just put it back a little bit. All right, but still, as a range. Okay, 
that's fine. So, if you just, I just want you to hear the direct sound, and then when the flange goes on top, and I want you to listen to the top end. All right, so. <laughs> This was really important. So, um, so for example, when uh, David Gilmour's soloing and he's, he's digging in, and it's, it's a... and a lot of flanges just don't have that top hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get to a point. It's like, no, we need to filter that off. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's kind yeah. of buffery high end to me. It's it's that uh, really. It's not just treble. It's presence as well. Absolutely. It's it's right up there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, I want to. Two questions before we move on. Yes, sir. One. What does the switch do? Ah, the switch is so cool. So at the moment, um, it's on normal flanging. It's 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 moving backwards and forwards. The switch turns off the. Um, the LFO, so that all you get is you, you can move the um, where that frequency that like the crossover point. So just fix it. So yeah, so that the, the you, what you're moving is the delay time, and it fixes where that that sort of filter is. So if you t if we if that's we go, how you use it, isn't it? No, I use it when a really slow rate oh, okay. like around here. Um, so with the slow rate on. But now if we turn the, sorry, turn the, that off. So suddenly the rate knob is, doesn't do anything, but with using the rate. I love that. Come in, 32, it's time for your refuel. <laughs> Sounds like a blooming robot. Actually, I, to be fair, I suppose that's the kind of things they had around at that time to create those sorts of weird TV effect noise sounds, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and before, right. just before we move on, what is a flanger, quickly, as opposed to a phaser? Okay, so a flanger is you are doubling the signal and then you're delaying it ever so slightly. You're delaying it, it's a shorter time period than a chorus, and then you're modulating that time backwards and forwards. And the only difference really between um, the flanging and the chorus is, is that delay, the delay time. Uh, the Electric Mistress thing's got about 18 milliseconds. Um, chorus is generally like 25, 30 milliseconds. But that's it, this is why you see a lot of um, choruses have the chorus flanger switch, and it yep. just it just shortens that delay time. Phase is different because instead of um, modulating the time, it modulates the it's modulating the phase, um, so it's sweeping the frequency. It's it's re really interesting, but they have fundamentally different sounds. Yeah, um, and which is again why people say say oh, I want to have a, a flanger phaser and a, a chorus in one box. I'm saying well you can get the the flanger. And the chorus in one box, but the phases is a whole different whole thing. Different, if we're yep. talking analog, that is, yep. by the way. Okay, um, so our, our challenge now is to see which of these others sound a bit like it. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yes, that is the challenge. So, um, yeah, I'm going to use the, I'll set up a dirty sound with the mud honey. <laughs> That's such a great sounding pedal. Okay, now this is with the mistress on. Thank <laughs> you. 
Right, here we go with this track. the flanger no, on that but it's just that's you know i'm not trying to play you know yeah it's, yeah it's just the the flavors of it's but where that's, it's too even though there's quite a lot of gain in his sound it's too distorted isn't it for right. his sound so anyway gain. this is not a sound like gilmore thing okay. and if it is we failed dismally so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let's move along um so anyway uh so let's see if we can so that was the original mistress right and it's got all the top end and a little bit of movement. So let's see what, how we go with the electric lady. If I turn the rate down and the, again the range up nice and high. Color back the same way. Okay, right, so this is the, the electric lady. Artifacty, mm -hmm. robot-y stuff came in with the miss with the elect lady, yep. and I was wondering if it was in the mistress as well. Yes, but to a sort of more pleasing yes degree, but, if, yeah, if yeah, that's yeah. possible. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. It's, that's that stuff has got to be there for it to sound right. But there's something about what the mistress does that sort of sits in a better spot. Okay, so yeah, that was elect lady. This is the heart and flanger. <laughs> Something about the fundamental EQ of that is very different from the other two yep. in a most pleasing fashion. Okay. Yeah, you know, can you see what you think? So I go from the original. <laughs> Why is it so much louder? I've got a theory. Tell me a theory. I, t I, t I tell you why it's so much louder. It's not that it's so much louder, it's that the electric mistress is so much quieter. The original electric mistress drops your signal by about 20%. Okay. I, I think what these guys are doing are compensating for that volume loss. I was wondering if it might be doing something to the phase of the two amps. No, because it's in the, it's, the, it's before. But if you, the, if you, okay then, play with the mud honey on. Just the mud honey. loud sounds way louder to me yeah yeah and so you know is there an internal job yeah um i don't know there may be there may be so it was a really common complaint with the mistress the about the volume quiet, job yeah, yeah. yeah? so these so, are all going into replicates to to get rid of that problem 
Yep. Yeah. This will be scary. I wonder if it's even nearly. But it's been in here so long the action's dropped it's touching the frets. Let's see if we can get away with it. Right. Um, so what I need is loads of gain. Okay. Um, Is unplayable. The action, is, <laughs> the action has dropped, and the <laughs> strings are. It sounds really good. The frets are on the strings. I just when you were uh, the reason for doing that when we were listening to the flanger earlier, it mm. reminded me a lot of that early eighties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Paul Gilbert and I mean, blimey, I can't play that stuff. But you know, where you heavy rocking stuff. Yeah. I'm going to take this home for a birthday, Dan. I think it needs uh, some loving. It needs saving. Um. Right, so it's yeah, the, lasted, the Hartman flanger uh, was cool, but it, it, like you said, it changed the, the time. But listen to the listen to the I go from the mistress into the rock sound. <laughs> that and the elect lady for yep. me. Yep. Is there something set on the elect lady that's making it sound woofy and not defined? No. Because is any combination of those knobs going to make that any better? No, you can try. I don't know what they do, so let's give it a go. between the electric mistress, the elect lady and the long amp. Yes. Just briefly.
and just for good measure, sorry. <laughs> Interesting. So, what I'm hearing here, Elect Lady, is mm -hmm. doesn't have the fidelity. No. The Hartman is a super strong sound, mm -hmm. but actually doesn't sound much like the Mistress. No. So it's a different thing. It's a different thing. The long amp sounds like the Mistress, and it's got the volume benefit that the Hartman brings. It's got all that top end clarity that the Mistress has got, but it gets rid of that volume drop. Okay, that was dirty sounds. That was dirty sounds. Okay, so clean sounds. Um, Actually, before we move on to that, why every time we feature the Mistress, somebody usually comments, mm -hmm. thanks by the way for all your comments, we really appreciate them. Uh, apology from, from me for not answering very many last week. I was at Ikea. It's all right. Dan, Dan stepped in and did a load, uh, but you know we try and answer loads of comments and questions. And but IKEA, IKEA won last week. When you walk into IKEA, mm -hmm. it's like we, you know we talk about log logarithmic scales of decibels. Yes, it's logarithmic scale of pain and time. Yes. So you literally you walk through the door and you've been, you your watch says you've been in there one minute, but you've been in there three hours. Yeah. Well, I have a very strict like so. Um, I say to my wife, we're going to Ikea, that's fine. I have to have my meatballs. Then you've got two hours. You have me for two hours in Ikea and you can spend that time any time that you like. You can't even get up the escalators in two hours. But at, at two hours, at, after two hours, I'm heading to the checkout with whatever we've got. <laughs> and that's it, we're done. Because that's what, I just can't do any more than that. Yeah. So we plan, we get everything and that's all good. I drove there. Realised that the stuff we wanted to buy wouldn't fit in the car. Right. Did a on your on your mobile phone you can hire a van from there. Right. Pick the van up, key code. I drive from so I drive from my house to IKEA, pick up the van, drive from IKEA to my house, mm. hour and ten. I then drive the van back to IKEA and my car home. Oh man. <laughs> So you were driving for four hours, that doesn't include any shopping? It was, I think, more like five and a half in the car. Oh, brutal. And four in Ikea. It was a nine and a half hour day. Plus the two and days it took me to build everything. <laughs> Plus the three and a half hours to go back and exchange the stuff that wasn't right. Oh, man. Yeah, I so, can't do it. I can't do it. Ikea ate my comments. All right. Last week. Okay. It's, it's okay. That was I've, a tangent. I've got your back. <laughs> Um, right, so clean, the clean sound. So the I'm gonna, difference. The, I'm going to introduce this other guitar which I had at the beginning of the video. Sorry, carry on. It's okay. Um, okay, so Andy Summers used his mistress in a different way. He, David Gilmore, had the range basically cranked, so a really slow movement, but across a really full yeah. frequency. Whereas Andy Summers basically had the range turned like not completely off, but really low. And it's basically a real, like a, um, a subtle, like a filter. Yeah, hang on, what does the range do again, the range? So the range is the sweep, the, the, the frequency range across the sweep of the flanger. So Gilmore had a bigger sweep. Yes. And Summers had a... Narrower. Right. Narrower, yes. So, yeah, so, yeah. Um, Andy would have his up here. Ah, oh, quick little aside. Um, so people would see the the David Gilmore settings of his electric mistress like this. And everyone say, oh okay, so he basically had his knob set at uh eleven o'clock, you know, ten between ten and eleven o'clock. The thing on the mistresses though is that the start position on all these knobs is different. Yeah. The start position on the rate is here and then yeah. finishes here. Alright? The start position on the range is here at basically so yeah, yeah, yeah. at one o'clock and finishes here at eleven o'clock. The start position on the colour starts at what's that, quarter to four? Um it sta starts at uh four o'clock, finishes there um at two. So Isn't, when you see that Now look, I know that there's 
So if you look at the where the things are marked, yep. there's one missing, right? That's right. And that's the start and end point. Yeah, so you've got the yep, start point, end point. But why can't you just I don't know. turn it down to there, take the knob off and put that there? Because it's one louder. Uh, should I show you why? The knobs they used on these uh, have got the... Yeah. So they'll only fit... You can't, in other words, you can't change the position of the... So is there a reason that the pots are mounted in that way inside? Uh, um, if you, yes, there is. <laughs> because the pots on either side the, are bent over the circuit port and there something underneath. There you go. Uh, it's, a, it's a, yeah. So that's it's, why. It's, yeah. That's the best example of, yeah, we've made it. Sorry, it's got to stay like that. Okay, we need to, how can we get around this? Yeah. Let's just carry on. Yep. So anyway, that's that's why you see everyone sort of goes, okay, that's where he sets it. So and you'll see, like on the on the Hartman here, that is basically the same settings as that. Yeah. So if yep. you set all that to eleven o'clock, it wouldn't sound the same. Exactly. At all. Exactly. Ah, right. interesting. I've learned something. There you go. Well, another thing. Um, okay. So, um, what the Andy Summers thing is, he basically reduces his range down to about there. So now with a clean sound. Uh, the Dyner comp is also very important for this. Um, that's an original 1974 one, which is basically the same one that he used. And then we put the mistress on and you get this. So it's just really subtle, but you hear that sort of frequency sweeping. It's just a one, it's that one little delay has. I love that, I love that. That was, uh, that was better than Gilmore, I've got to say. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm just, that's, you know, I'm not, to be honest, I've never played Gilmore before, and I'm on a telly. Oh, no, no, it's know, not, it's not, I'm not being critical. I'm that's got closer to that sound, though. Yeah, absolutely. Because everyone lists the stuff that Gilmore used. Yeah. Whenever I plug that stuff in, I, literally nothing. Yeah. Not even nearly. You know, because it doesn't sound like a big muff to me, even though we all know that it is. Mm. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. But he's got, on. yeah, but he's got EQ and all that sort of stuff. And oh, and he's, you know, yeah. one amp's got one thing and the other amp's got another. And, and he's David Bloody he's Gilmore. David Bloody Gilmore. So, you know, the thing with the mistress and for that heavy sounds for me, um, it's just, it, it's that bit of movement that it gives, regardless yeah. of anything that, you know, I've only, I've only used David Gilmore as an example yeah. um, of someone who famously used it. But it just, what it does is it just gives it that little bit of movement. Is it actually shelving bottom end, or is that just the loss in volume that no, we can hear? No, it's well, yeah, it's the loss in volume. If we had that and we'd turn the amps up, yeah, it's it's all still there. So it's, you can hear it in the other ones that have got the volume compensated. It's just because it's quite a big volume drop. Yeah, it is problematic, yeah. in fact, it's, which is why you would use the pre and post gain in G two. The whole reason, yeah, that, it was, that very pedal was the whole reason that from the very first switcher we had. The compensated volume, <laughs> so you could so, so you could turn your mistress up exactly, <laughs> exactly, because <laughs> that's having a huge effect on what the amp's doing as well. Absolutely, isn't it? Yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and it's enough. The, the most important thing with that is that drop is enough to pull you out of the mix. And how did he cope with it then? Did he just? I think he had EQs and things on either side, and right. Yeah. Okay, so that's the that's the mistress of the clean sounds. We'll set these up. So all I'm going to do again is reduce the rate. Um, yeah, just to clarify, on the original original mistress is called the range, but on uh, and on the left band it's called range, and here it's called the depth, and this is the range. So there we okay, go. so range is depth. Yep. Uh, right. Duesenberg Julia, new for now. We saw it on the Duesenberg Ooh, stand. Yeah. It's got these new pickups. Yeah, uh, which we'll hear in a minute, and we'll do. We'll talk about the guitar more in another video, maybe. But I figured it might sound quite nice for the clean, some clean stuff. Nice. Okay. Can I play some chords? Yeah, yeah. You can play some. You can play some better chords in a minute. But I'll, I'll give it a go. <laughs> uh, 
So this switch turns this stuff on and off. Mm -hmm. Yep. This switch switches these from single coil to a humbucking mode, I believe. Okay. through that they're, yeah, just, so they're just all on and off are they yeah so what i'll do i'll leave the dynacom on The harm has got a mid-range to it. Yeah. That's, it's really cool, but it doesn't, it's not like the mistress. The last thing I want to try is I want to, I'm going to boost the output of the mistress. Because for me, it's fairly clear that the, the one that sounds most like the mistress is the long app. Um, like by quite, quite a long way. It's got, it still has all the top there. Yeah, the other two don't sound like it at all. No. But what I want to do is I'm going to out, I'm going to boost the output of the mistress and see how close it gets to the to the mistress when it's lit because it's really yeah. difficult to tell because every time you keep the mistress on oh volume yeah it just makes every yeah. difference doesn't so it? Let, let's let, well, let yeah I mean and, and when I say it doesn't the other two don't sound like it that's not in a bad way the mistress would drive me crazy yeah I couldn't deal with that so I would choose the Hartman every day for that like boosted thing mm -hmm. but it doesn't sound like it so. As you say. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what I've done is I've set the the long app and the mistress up to sound similar, but I've boosted the mistress. Um, just so that the volumes are so similar. So the volume is the same. One thing that's occurred to me while we've been doing this is, again, because 
everything when you're dealing with loudness and frequency. The reason the heart, one of the reasons the Hartman sounds so middly is because it's pushing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the amps in a particular frequency. Yeah. That's sounding louder mm -hmm. with the more volume. So it's not. It might not be radically differently cued, but because of the volume difference, that's making a massive, it's a massive difference. thing. Yeah, massive thing. Okay, so um, yeah, just so clean, mistress. me confusing the phaser and flanger debate again because that was all phaser wasn't it yeah nice though It's the, the top end thing for me, you know, it's because it's all, the top end's all there in the Roxanne and that's, everything else is sort of overly filtered. Yeah, I mean the Roxanne certainly sounds most like the, the mistress yes. sat here where we're sat. One final thing that we haven't actually talked about all the way along, when you first, when we first looked at the electric mistress you said that you like to run it before overdrive. Yes. And is that always? I always run it before overdrive. What I've done today is I've run it after because this is the way that most people do most it. Most people do it. So, and the, the difference is more pronounced running it after. Right. Um, Can we hear, I don't know, uh, one of them before and after overdrive? Yeah, yeah, sure. Just to, just to finish off? Okay, so what we'll do, uh, let's hear, um, okay, let's stick with this one for now. So put that back to a, like a normal setting. So we will have, uh, let's say Roxanne is in seven. So let's have the Mud Honey, um, which is in two. So right, we're gonna have the Mud Honey and the Roxanne on together. Four is gonna have the Roxanne after the overdrive. And five is gonna have the Roxanne before the overdrive. <laughs> oh, awesome, go on. That's, that's the beginning of our... Um... There you go, there's your clock noise. It was a rainy night in March. Actually, it's April now. John had just descended his horse in the badlands of Minnesota. Right, so this is with the flanger after.
Awesome. Was that a flanger? <laughs> it was a flanger. Was it? Yeah, look, a quick thing. He had a bit more game than that than me. <laughs> I just quickly show you the reason I like to set my flange up for the overdrive, right? Well, you're probably not using an overdrive like that, are you? No, but if you, you see, if I've got the mud honey set up like this, if I put the flanger into the overdrive, it doesn't fundamentally change the sound of the overdrive. <laughs> If I put the flanger after it, it fundamentally changes everything. So, you know, it's it's a subtle thing. Not yeah, not once you're talking volume and gain, it's not subtle at all, is it? It's, no, no, absolutely, absolutely. It's uh, it, yeah. Anyway, I'm um. What do you think? given my opinion by a jazz chord. Okay, very good. Uh, I, yeah, as you know, flanging, not my world at all. I don't know how to use it. <laughs> uh, it's such a cool sound, hmm. but you've got to pick your moments, I think. Abs I yeah. think I would know where to use a phaser, maybe. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, as you know, I'm n never big on modulation effects, really. Right. Um, but, you know, clearly, that one sounds most like that. Yeah, yeah. To me. Yeah, yeah. And actually, and, oh God, don't shoot me for saying this, better than that, in my opinion. Because all the problems with that in terms of the dropped level, that's got magic. And I think if you were in the studio or you were, you know. Which is why I want to keep it, I want to keep it for best. Yeah, because you, know? you can set the sound around the pedal, exactly. can't you? You can make the amp exactly. louder and you, it's not like you're switching it in with loads of other pedals, but live, to play nice on a pedal board, not least that it's the size of a, Yep, Eight, field. 18 volts on a mini jack. Right, okay, so how's the long amp powered? Uh, 9 to 12, it's a standard 9 to 12. Great, 12. which the others are too, the Elect Lady and the Hartman. Yeah. Is the Hartman even made anymore? No. Okay, and and finally, not finally, one more question that's just crossed my mind. How does this differ from something like a Boss BF2, is it? Is that the Boss flanger? Yeah, uh, they're great, they're a classic flanger, but they just... This sits in its own space. BF2, um, you know, it's quite a lot of flanges that sound like that. The, the electric mist just really sits there on its own. Right, well, well, I've loved it. Like I said, <laughs> this has been a personal thing. Mix has been along here for the ride. But um, I am, you know, look, I think the Roxanne is, is fantastic. And I've used the Elect Lady. I actually used it on that recording that we did. Yeah. Um, you know, I've used it for a long time. The recording we did with Universal Audio, which should see the light of day before too much longer. Yeah. But I'm, yeah, I, you know, I'm delighted with the Roxanne. I think it sounds fantastic. Um, and the Mud Honey. Mud Honey sounds, oh man, spectacular. Awesome. It's so good. Yeah, yeah well done, T Rex. Brilliant. Okay, guys. Uh, we'll hear more of this as well in, in coming videos. Yeah. When we're yeah. in more familiar territory. Yeah, it's me. a very cool looking thing. And here's one of these that works. Yeah. I, I don't know how they've done that. You think nice. it's the spring, right? I do. I think it's, well, it's the spring. Anyway, look. Anyway, uh -oh. guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. A massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Uh, we're giving away some very cool stuff. Um, for our patrons, so yes, head over there, check it out, awesome. Uh, also, massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Anderson's Music of Guildford and Surrey. In USA is... Uh, Rift City Guitar of New Hope, Minnesota. And in Australia... Uh, Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. Fabulous. Uh, and also, please check out thatpedalshowstore.com where you can buy a lovely camo pedal shirt-like mix. Or you can buy... Um, One day we'll have a fridge. Like Marshall. Oh, One day yeah, yeah, there'll yeah. be a TPS fridge. Yeah. No one will buy it, but we'll have it. Um, you know what we haven't done? What haven't we done? I think we should fade out. Can, is it possible to turn them all on? Yeah. Let's do that. Are you kidding? This okay. will sound weird. All right. So I'll start with the... Uh... Oh my god!
god! Sorry. Uh. There you go, 6k.